cone study is like having your house set on fire on a regular scheduled basis. That is the best way I can think of to put it. A cone can be a kind of riddle or story that is given to the student to understand, to reveal where they are within their, their Zen studies. At first, the cone may not appear to make any sense whatsoever, but as you meditate on it, meaning begins to unfold. And the meaning is the simplest one that can be understood. But mentally, intellectually, understanding a cone is not enough. There is a call to action within each of them that is a part of the puzzle as well. The student has to discover what the action the cone is saying is needed. Um, here's an example. It's one of my favorites. A young novice approaches an elder monk and asks, There are no words and there is no silence. How then do you know what truth is? And the monk replies, I remember sitting in a field, and two butterflies flew over the grass. That's a cone. In the first part, if there are no words and there is no silence, the young novice is speaking about sitting zazen. In zazen, we sit and we're silent. There are no words, but our heads are full of them, so there really is no silence either. If sitting zazen is supposed to allow us to discover what is the truth of existence, how, the young novice is asking, are we to know which of the thoughts going in our head uh, is the truth? You know, which is the illusion, which is the truth? And he has a good point there. One of the rules, if you will, about meditation, uh, there's actually kind of two, two of them, uh, is that there are two things you, sh you should not do. You shouldn't teach yourself how to meditate, and you shouldn't meditate without regular contact with the teacher. This is because you won't be able to see your own illusions. You'll only be able to perceive the illusions that you're comfortable with giving up already. You may see the other ones, but it's going to be too easy for you to rationalize them into being a kind of truth. A teacher can help you to see where you are kind of deluding yourself and, and going down the garden path. It's the same as, you know, in the game of Go and Shudan, one of the learning practices is to review the, the games that you play, but they caution you against reviewing your own because you will never see the mistakes you actually make, only the ones you are comfortable with. It's, it's the same idea. And the monk's response, I remember sitting in a field and two butterflies flew over the grass. With that response, he is telling the novice that the truth lies in being present, of just being and being able to to witness life around you. The butterflies are truth. They are just butterflies completely doing what butterflies do. You can't really complicate a butterfly. So the student, having reached an understanding of the cone, will mistakenly think that they have mastered it, but there is still the call to action. And what is the call to action? to become the butterfly.